Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the top 10 things that will happen if the big one hits the west coast. Number 10. Aftershocks Further complicating rescue missions and evacuations are aftershocks which will continue for days afterwards. This will cause much more destruction, and notably it will be hard to pull survivors from unstable buildings because an aftershock could happen at any moment. This leads to more destruction and more people buried under the rubble. As a result, the death toll will rise again, either from people attempting rescues or simply because people can't get to them. Aftershocks are also known for causing landslides, especially in areas with lots of hills. Hills, you probably realize, are found all over the west coast. Number 9. It will cause a devastating tsunami for North America's west coast. The earthquake will, of course, cause a ton of damage. Then people along the west coast of Northern California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia will have about 10 to 15 minutes to get to higher ground because a tsunami will be heading their way. Depending on where the wave makes landfall, it could be 20 to over 100 feet tall, carrying debris like boats and cars. Inland, the giant wave will be traveling at 12.5 miles per hour. That may not seem very fast, but a grown man is knocked over by ankle-deep water traveling around half that speed. Unfortunately, many people are going to have a hard time getting to high enough grounds because a lot of the roadways in the earthquake zone will be destroyed. The good news is that only about 71,000 people live year-round along the west coast where the tsunami will hit. However, some areas of the coast are popular tourist attractions, so while many people don't live there year-round, thousands of people work in the area, and even more visit during the summer months. This will make evacuations much more difficult. For example, when people live in an area where there's some type of inherent danger, they're generally more prepared. However, it's very doubtful that tourists will be prepared. They may not even know how to drive out of town without their GPS, and this will only add to more chaos in the already nightmarish scenario. Number 8. Japan, Indonesia, the South Pacific, and Hawaii won't be safe either. Not only will the rupture cause problems in North America, but a giant tsunami will also be headed in the direction of Hawaii, Indonesia, the South Pacific, and Japan. Luckily, these places will get a warning because it will take the wave about 10 hours to travel there. However, the wave will still be over 10 feet tall and millions will be displaced. It's believed that these countries will be affected because they've already experienced it just over 300 years ago. In 2005, researchers found evidence that seven 12-foot waves hit the village of Miho, Japan in 1700. Those waves were caused by a Cascadia earthquake. Number 7. Seattle will collapse Seattle has a population of just over 686,000, and a lot of those people will be displaced if the Cascadia Fault ruptures. When the earthquake starts, Seattle will be devastated by landslides, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30,000 of them. Another problem that Seattle will face is a phenomenon called soil liquefaction. The process happens when loosely packed and waterlogged sediments that are at or near the surface lose strength. It's similar to standing in ankle-deep water on a sandy beach. If you wiggle your toes while standing in the water in the sand, your foot will sink. Well, in Seattle, this will happen with soil that has buildings on top of it. That's obviously not a good thing. In Seattle, about 15% of the structures are built on liquefiable soil. This includes 17 daycares and the homes of around 34,500 people. Number 6. Oregon would be destroyed One of the states that will be hardest hit by a Cascadia earthquake is Oregon. The problem is that the Cascadia Fault wasn't discovered until 1970. Oregon didn't have any earthquake measures in place until 1974. As a result, the Oregon Department of Geology and Mineral Industries estimates that 75% of all structures in Oregon would fail to withstand a Cascadia earthquake. This includes 3,000 schools, half of police departments, and two-thirds of the state's hospitals. Another problem with Oregon is that many of the cities are fairly isolated. There are only a few roads in the entire state that lead east away from the destruction. However, 38% of the state's bridges will be out of commission, along with the railroads and airport runways. Another problem is that all liquid gas is shipped in, so fuel shortages are very likely. This will leave people stranded, making it incredibly difficult for search and rescue workers to reach them. This could be made even worse during the summer months when 50,000 people visit the beaches on Oregon's coast. If the earthquake were to happen on a beautiful summer day when beaches are packed, it would be utter havoc. Another problem which faces every state and city on this list is that if earthquakes happen at night, then all these problems would have to be dealt with in the dark. Number 5. Canada's Worst Natural Disaster Canada will also be hit hard by a Cascadia earthquake. According to studies, it has the potential to be the worst natural disaster in Canadian history. Vancouver Island, which has a population of nearly 750,000, will have a lot of the problems that the other areas we've mentioned will face. Just like Seattle, buildings will collapse because of soil liquefaction. 
Like Oregon, the cities on the coast where the tsunami will hit are popular tourist areas. Also, one of Canada's most beautiful cities is Victoria, which is the most popular city on the island with a population of 350,000, is in the extreme zone for the earthquake. The problem with Vancouver Island is that, well, it's an island. The airport is right in the extreme danger zone for the earthquake. And unfortunately, there's no highway to this danger zone. Sorry, I had to. The most common way on and off the island are ferry systems, and those would have a two-week disruption. This is going to make it incredibly difficult to get hundreds of thousands of people basic supplies like food, water, and medicine. Number 4. The San Andreas Fault May Rupture Around the Same Time If the earthquake and the tsunami from the Cascadia rupture weren't bad enough, there appears to be a link between the Cascadia Fault and the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault runs 800 miles through California. You may remember that it was the star of its own summer blockbuster, or maybe you don't care because the movie was so forgettable. Researchers believe that there is a connection. It turns out 13 of the last 15 earthquakes caused by the San Andreas Fault were preceded by a Cascadia earthquake. While a San Andreas earthquake often happens years later, it's also possible that it could happen within hours. For this reason, even if it didn't happen immediately, Los Angeles, the second most populous metropolitan area and the city with the second highest gross domestic product in the US, would need to be evacuated because it isn't exactly the most earthquake-ready city in the country. Notably, all the electricity, gas, and water lines cross the San Andreas Fault. If an earthquake reaching an 8 on the Richter scale happened, Los Angeles wouldn't have any gas, water, or hydro for months. Many of the modern buildings would survive, but older ones would be condemned as structurally unstable. It would take years and billions of dollars to restore Los Angeles to resemble a shadow of its former self. Number 3. Disease Epidemic This type of disaster will be of unprecedented levels in North America. For example, 400,000 people were displaced by Katrina, but more than six times that amount will be displaced in the wake of a Cascadia earthquake and tsunami. The problem is, with this displacement and the inevitable disruption to essential services, there are often disease outbreaks and epidemics. This happens because it's hard to get access to clean water, overcrowding in shelters, and limited access to healthcare and medication. If the Cascadia earthquake happens before proper safety precautions are taken, there will probably be outbreaks of diseases like salmonella, dysentery, and typhoid fever in the disaster areas. Number 2. The West Coast of North America Would Burn When describing what the West Coast would be like after a Cascadia earthquake, the director of FEMA in that area said that everything west of Interstate 5 will be toast. And yes, that is literally the term he used. It may be toast because a major problem with earthquakes is that fire breaks out. In areas like Seattle and the state of Oregon, fire departments will also be in ruins. If they aren't, many roads will be destroyed, making it difficult to travel to fires to put them out. If they get to the scene, if they have an earthquake-resistant fire system like Vancouver, and if it isn't damaged, then they may be able to put out a few fires. But it will still be very difficult to contain cities full of small fires. These small fires will turn into big fires, and the next thing you know, whole blocks are gone. God forbid the fires spread to the forests and the brush that cover the west coast which, by the way, are already predisposed to forest fires. Things would be even more dire if an earthquake happens while forest fires were already raging because resources would be depleted. Things would only get worse if the San Andreas earthquake happens around the same time. In Los Angeles, hundreds of fires would start, but they wouldn't have access to water to extinguish it, since the water lines cross the San Andreas Fault. Number 1. Death and Destruction As you probably gathered, a Cascadia earthquake would be absolutely devastating to the west coast of North America. FEMA's projections are rather alarming. In the United States alone, they estimate that 10,000 people will die, 30,000 will be injured, and 2.5 million will be displaced. They'll need water, food, medicine, healthcare, and shelter. Of course, if the San Andreas Fault was to rupture around the same time, thousands more will be injured and killed. Millions more will be displaced. Even if the San Andreas earthquake doesn't happen, that area may have to be displaced until the cities are more earthquake-proof. Following a Cascadia earthquake, one is likely to happen soon thereafter. Hopefully, a San Andreas earthquake doesn't happen until many years later. As for damages, according to FEMA estimates, the earthquake and the ensuing tsunami will cause $309 billion in damage. Every city within 100 miles of the coast will suffer blackouts. Inland, power will be restored within days, but it will take months to get hydro and natural gas back to areas near the coast. As for water systems, it's estimated that it could take at least three weeks for restoration. 
It could take seven months or even up to a year to repair them. That's a long time to live in an area without running water, gas, or electricity, especially if you're trying to rebuild a city. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.